When you came to the gallery, you would see a comfortable desert, blaring evening sun through fog, a forest with birds and insects, clowns and mime artists as staff, Anish Kapoor-style mirrors at all entrances to rooms and on the slopes, no stairs. You would hear birdsong, rain, grasses and trees in breeze, and smell baking bread, parks after rain, a purity of enthusiasm. Words like knives deconstructing and mythologising them in nervous translation. You could touch other people's well-being, feel the pulse of the walls, their texture of skin would respond. Floors, the consistency of sponge cake, you would be barefoot in a petting zoo with hedgehogs, porcupines and eels. You would invite the community to lie make human sculptures, connected artworks at times intervals during opening hours, be utterly improbable yet extraordinary eye dialect, seek refuge from the unending deluge of human stupidity. I would allow children to run and climb and fall, be lords of chaos and creators of these flights, interested in myths, destroying the idea. I would ask the artists to pretend to know people who enter the gallery, mining a lost experience, a fortnight of tears, but their beauty remained. If it was my gallery, everyone would have spiritual insurrection, immediately and irrevocably sisters, brothers. If it was my gallery, no one would be dragged across concrete in central Milton Keynes by relentless social Darwinism, fighting with my family. Besides displaying art, the museum would be used for a trip to the moon, for sympathetic if anthropological anxieties with impossible love, la belle et la bête, tales to astonish, tales of suspense, strange tales, suspense, attention to the expression of character, access to the complete dream palace, interface between physical and virtual worlds. At night, when it's all closed up, the museum would look beyond the manifest content of a latent content, tantalising fragments. Yet, they would succeed. <laughs>